This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So I know I haven't made a video in quite a few days. Uh, I was actually sick with strep throat, but I'm feeling better. My voice is still a little raspy, so I apologize for that. But anyway, in this video, we're going to look at 3JS. And this is just a, like I said, a getting started video. It's not a crash course or anything. It's It should be your first 3JS video. We're going to look at some of the terminology, you know, scenes, cameras, renderers, things like that. We're going to create a basic project, which will be a textured cube that rotates. Um, and it'll give you some of the foundation that you need to create some really cool stuff. And I would highly recommend going to the 3JS.org website and just checking out some of this stuff here. So just mute that. So here's an example of, of some of the things you can do. And it uses WebGL, so it's very, very powerful animations, um, as you can see here. So really cool stuff. So you might want to check some of these other ones out. All right, so let's get started. I have VS Code open here, and I have an index.html file, which I've already set up because it's very basic. We're just including 3JS. I'm using the CDN here, including a main.js, and then... In our style up here in the head, we're just clearing the margin in the body and setting a canvas to 100% width and height. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We don't even have to add anything to the body. All right, now the main JS is completely empty. That's where we're going to do everything. And then I also have a textures folder with some different textures um, that we can basically paint our cube with. I'm also going to put a link in the description to a GitHub repository that has a bunch of other textures. Uh, and of course, you can create your own as well. All right. So the first thing we want to do is create what's called a scene. Okay, so basically a scene to put everything on. So we're going to initialize that with new and then three. Any any time you initialize a new object with 3JS, you want to use this. Oops, you want to use this uh, all uppercase three and we want a scene. So we're going to go ahead and set that to new scene. Okay, and I have this open here, which isn't going to do anything just yet. So if we look in the documentation for scene, uh, let's see. So basically scenes allow you to set up what and where is to be rendered by 3JS. This is where you place objects, lights and cameras. Okay, so we're setting up a scene. Now, the next thing we want to do is create a camera. Now, as far as the camera, there's, there's different types. I'm actually going to show you an image real quick. We're using what's called a perspective projection camera or a perspective camera, which looks like this. So basically, you can think of it as we're setting this up here to look at our objects, our animation, anything that we're going to create in our scene like this. Okay, and there's something called a far clip paint plane, which is kind of like the back wall and then a near clip plane, which is like the front wall. Um, there's also an orthographic projection camera. I believe there's some others as well, but this I like this image because it gives you an idea of, of what we're doing. We're going to render stuff here and we're facing it with this camera. Okay, and we can rotate things and move them around. Now to create our camera, we're going to go ahead and just set this to new three dot perspective camera. Um, and this takes in a, a couple things. In fact, I can Check this out in the documentation. So, yeah, you can see all the different types of cameras. We want perspective and it takes in these four things. It takes in the field of view in degrees. It takes in the aspect, the near uh, near plane and the far plane. So basically this image that I showed you. So the near clip plane and far clip plane. All right. So. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and add that stuff. So I'm going to do 75 degrees. Now, next we have the aspect ratio, which you almost always want to use the, the width of the element in this case, which is the entire window divided by the height of the element or things might look a little strange. So we're going to take the entire window and take the inner width and divide it by the window dot inner height. Okay. Now we want to add two more. Oops, we want to add two more parameters in here, which is the near plane, which I'm going to use 0.1 and then the far, which is where I'm going to use 1000. 
all right? And it's, this is a bit hard to explain. Basically, anything closer to the eye than the near clipping distance isn't going to be displayed because it's too close. And then anything further away from the eye than the, the far clipping distance isn't displayed because it's too far. So these are the values that are in the documentation. So this is what I'm going to use. All right, so we have our scene. We have our camera. Um, next thing we want is the renderer. All right, so... We need to initialize the renderer. Um, there's a few different ones that are available. We're using the WebGL renderer, which is very, very powerful. It displays really beautiful scenes. Um, WebGL is, a, is the, the web graphics library. It's a very powerful API for 2D and 3D graphics uh, within supported browsers. So let's do renderer and let's set that to the new three dot and we want WebGL renderer. <clears throat> All right. So next thing we want to do is set the size um, of the renderer, which in our case is going to be the whole window. So we can say renderer and there's a method called set size. Uh, and in here we're going to use the entire width and height of the window. So window dot inner width and inner heights. Okay, so we have our render. Now what we need to do is render it into our HTML document. So we're going to take the document dot body and we're going to call append child. This is just vanilla JavaScript, but then we're going to add in our renderer, which has a, an element or I should say a property called Dom element. Okay, so we want to render that into the HTML. All right, now if I save this and we take a look, you can see that we get this black background. All right, so this is where we can render our objects and create all of our animations. So our scene set up, um, there's a ton of different objects that we can work with and I'll show you some of the examples in the docs. We're going to be using what's called a geometry object and, and we're going to use a box geometry. Uh, actually, we can just let's look that up real quick. So if we check out box, uh, let's see, box geometry. So it's not showing up. Where is it? Right here, box geometry. All right, so box geometry is a geometry class for a rectangular cuboid that has uh, a given width, height, and depth. Okay, on creation, the cuboid is centered on the origin with each edge parallel to one of the axes. So basically, we want to create this um, and we could type this out, but I'm just going to grab this right here. Uh, let's go ahead and paste that in. I'm just going to change these to const. <clears throat> Now, this is going to create the box geometry object, and this is basically the, the depth, the width and the height. But I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'm going to change these to two. And then this here is the material, basically the material that we want to paint it with. In this in this case, we're using a color, but later on, I'm going to show you how we can use a texture. And I'm actually just going to change this to a to a blue. I'm going to just use 0000FF, so just hexadecimal blue. And then here we're using the mesh uh, method here to create the cube. Basically, this mesh takes in the geometry, which is the box geometry, and then the material, which is our color. Okay. now we want to add that to the scene. So we just call scene and then has a method called add and we add our cube. Now, you'll notice that if I go back, it's, it's not going to show yet because there's a couple other things we have to do. We actually need a function called animate. All right. Now. Inside here, we're going to call a method called request animation frame and pass an animate <clears throat> because basically what we want to happen here is this is going to create a loop that makes the renderer draw the scene every time the screen is screen is refreshed, which on a typical monitor would be 60 frames per second. Okay, so down here we're going to say render -er. And then there's actually a method called render and that's going to take in two things. It takes in the scene and the camera. Okay, now we have to call this function, of course, because we just created it. 
and it's still not showing and the reason for that is because of the camera position basically uh, by default the can the the coordinates will basically put the camera and the cube inside of each other so we need to reposition the camera before we call that animate so I'm going to go right here and just say camera dot position dot Z and set that to five so now if I go back we can see our cube <clears throat> now it's not rotating because we haven't added the rotation yet but it is there and it is a cube it just it kind of just looks like a blue square but it is an actual cube um, so what we can do is in our animate function we can say cube dot rotation and remember this is basically a, a loop so let's take the X cube rotation X and let's plus equals and then this is basically like the speed so we're going to do 0.01 And if we take a look now, you can see it's rotating. All right. Now I want it to rotate both ways. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this down and just change this X to a Y. And if I save that now, you can see it's rotating both ways. And if you want to speed it up, you can change these values. We can make it go crazy fast if we want. Change this to 60. And there we go. So you can kind of mess with that a little bit, but I'm going to put that back. All right. Now, another thing we can do with our WebGL render is we can use anti anti aliasing. I can never say that right. Um, but basically, see the edges here, how they're kind of uh, distorted or, or blurry, I guess, just like in a game where you can enable um, anti -alias aliasing. We can do that with our renderer. So if we go up to right here where we initialized it, we can pass in anti alias there if I say it in two words I can say it correctly set that to true and now if we take a look notice the edges are they're more sharp looking so we can use that uh, if we want all right so that's just a you know basic animation I want to refactor this a little bit because there's a few things I want to do one I want to add a texture two if I go ahead and I resize this Notice that it doesn't stay in the middle. If I reload, it will go into the middle. But as I resize and, and look at that, you see how it kind of it just messes up when we re resize the browser. So what I'm going to do is refactor this and I'm going to put everything into separate functions. So we're going to have all this stuff in an initialize function and we need to set some some of these variables as global. So up here, I'm just going to initialize with let scene. Let's see, let's do <clears throat> sorry, scene camera renderer and cube because we're going to be using these in multiple functions. So right here, I'm going to create a function called knit. And I'm going to move everything except the animate function into that init. Okay, so right here, we'll paste all that in. Now I initialize these variables up here, so we want to get rid of the declaration for scene camera renderer and cube <clears throat> excuse me sorry about my voice guys um, geometry and material we can leave that because these are just local uh, but yeah so if I save that we should get the same well we have to call in it so down here we'll say in it all right so we should get the same thing but still if I resize we're still having that problem So what I'm going to do is create another function. Uh, let's go right at the bottom here and let's call this on window resize. So there's a couple things we have to do here. We have to set the what's called the camera frust frustum aspect ratio. And we do that by saying camera dot aspect and we want to set that to again the 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 window width divided by the height so inner width divided by window dot inner height okay another thing we want to do is update the camera so we have to say uh, camera dot and then there's a method called update projection matrix And then finally, we want to uh, set the render size again, which I can just copy 
this line right here. Oops. Copy that and put that down here. Once again, we're just setting the size of the renderer to the the entire width and height. All right. Now, of course, this is, isn't called yet. What we need to do is create an event. So we want to set an event listener. <coughs> Oops. Uh, we want to add an event listener and the event we want to listen for is a resize of the browser. And once we do that, we want to call on window resize and just pass in false here. All right. So now if I go back and I resize, you can see that it's going to stay in the center. Okay, we don't have that the problem we had before. Okay, so now let's add a texture. So we, what we want to do is go up to the material because right now we're just using a, a color as our material, but I'm going to comment that out and then I'm going to create a texture. So to create a texture, we can say new three dot and we want to use the texture loader. Okay, now texture loader, we can call dot load. And I have a folder called textures and a file called crate dot gif that I'm going to use. <clears throat> All right. Now that creates the texture. However, we need to add it to the material. So what I'll do is copy this. However, instead of using color here, I'm going to use map and I'm going to set it to our texture. All right. So if I save that and I go back now, we have that crate that wood texture, which looks pretty cool. looks like a Minecraft block. And I have some other ones in here as well, like if we want to use, uh, let's see, metal dot JPEG. All right. And of course, you can create your own textures. And I'm going to put a link in the description to some other ones as well, if you want to mess around with it. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it as far as, you know, as far as the basics, creating a scene, a camera, a renderer, creating our animate function, um, adding a rotation. Of course, we're using box geometry, but there's a ton of different um, classes or, or objects that you can use. So definitely take a look at the docs. So if we go to um, examples and you can see, I mean, there's some other stuff here. We did the queue, but stuff like this and you can add mouse events. Um, Minecraft and create little Minecraft worlds. What else we have here? Stuff like that. Really cool. You can see I'm actually highlighting each little piece here. <clears throat> I can hold my mouse and move this. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do here. Cloth. So definitely check it out. And of course, the, the source for all of these examples are is available. So if you click on view source, it'll actually take you to the code. And I just want to show you, I mean, this is a, this is a much more complicated example, but a lot of the stuff that we did, you can see they're doing. They have their uh, initialize and animate functions and they created a scene. You can change the color of the scene, background, add fog, stuff like that. They're using a perspective camera. So same kind of stuff that we've done. They're using lights. We didn't get into lights, but uh, let's see down here. They're using all types of different uh, geometries, cloth ge uh, geometry, different materials and stuff like that. So obviously this is much more complicated, but it's what we've done is kind of the fundamentals. And you can see they have the on resize. Uh, animate so they're causing creating the loop with request animation frame so yeah hopefully this gives you just an idea of um, how to get started and if you're inter interested in animation um, definitely check out these examples and there's there's a lot you can learn from here uh, I think more than any tutorial so that's it guys hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video